shown here are graphs of the density of water versus temperature at a pressure of one atmosphere. The temperature for the top graph ranges from 0 to 90 degrees. The graph on the bottom is a zoomed in view of the top graph with a temperature range from 0 to 10 degrees. As you can see from the graphs, the density of liquid water increases as the temperature decreases from 100 degrees to 4 degrees Celsius. However, due to the negative volume expansion coefficient of water between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius, the density of water decreases from 4 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees. This is due to the fact that as water is nearing its freezing point at 0 degrees Celsius, the water molecules begin to arrange themselves according to the crystalline structure of ice. This structure is an open structure, which means there are more free spaces between the water molecules in ice crystals than between the water molecules when they move much more independently of one another in liquid water. The unusual thermal expansion behavior of water is the reason why lakes usually do not freeze completely in winter. Let's compare the behavior of a lake filled with water, which as we know expands upon freezing with that of a lake filled with a substance that contracts upon freezing. Since the upper layer in both lakes is exposed to the cold winter air, this layer is colder than the bulk liquid within the lake. For temperatures that are higher than 4 degrees Celsius, as the temperature of this upper layer decreases, its density increases, which causes it to sink to the bottom of the lake and mix with the bulk liquid within the lake. The new upper layer replaces the one that sunk to the bottom and upon being cooled by the cold air, also sinks to the bottom of the lake. This process continues until the entire lake is at a temperature of about 4 degrees Celsius. When the temperature of the upper layer in the water-filled lake then drops below 4 degrees Celsius, the upper layer does not sink to the bottom. This is due to the fact that in the temperature range between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius, Water's density decreases as the temperature decreases, hence the upper water layer remains floating on the surface of the lake, and the sinking and mixing process stops. On the other hand, the upper layer of the lake that is filled with a substance that contracts on freezing, continues to sink to the bottom as the temperature drops to zero. When the temperature of the water-filled lake reaches zero degrees Celsius, the upper water layer freezes and forms ice that floats on the surface of the lake. This insulates the water in the lake from the cold air above, and helps keep the temperature of the water below the surface at about 4 degrees Celsius. As for the other lake, assuming that the substance also freezes at 0 degrees Celsius, the solid that forms sinks to the bottom, and the lake freezes completely from the bottom up. The unusual thermal expansion behavior of water ensures that water-filled lakes do not freeze completely and that marine life can continue to live under the formed ice sheet. If water's behavior was similar to that of a substance that contracts on freezing, then lakes would freeze completely during winter, killing all marine life inside them. Thermal stress is generated in an object, due to a change in its temperature, while it is constrained from deforming due to thermal expansion. For example, if we heat a rod that is constrained between two rigid walls, compressive stresses will develop within the rod due to thermal-induced expansion. If on the other hand, we cool a wire that is rigidly attached to two solid walls, tensile stresses will develop in the wire due to thermal-induced contraction. Thermal stresses can also occur due to uneven or non-uniform heating or cooling of an object. For example, during welding. The very localized heating from the welding torch can cause localized thermal expansion within and around the weld area. This can generate high compressive stresses in the area surrounding the weld area. Another example relates to the fracture of objects that are made from brittle materials such as glass due to thermal stresses when they are heated or cool non-uniformly. For example, if you splash a light bulb with water while it is still hot, thereby cooling it in a non-uniform way then it will explode. As we have seen before in the solid mechanics section, the strain is related to the stress by the material's modulus of elasticity. The strain can also be expressed as the change in length of a specimen 
divided by its original length. By equating these two expressions for the strain, we get the shown equation. Recall that for a change in length that is due to thermal expansion, delta L is equal to the material's coefficient of linear expansion times the original length of the specimen times the change in temperature. So we can substitute this expression for delta L into the previous equation and get the shown equation. Then we can cancel out L from the numerator and denominator of the left-hand side of the equation and get this equation. The terms of this equation can be rearranged to calculate a delta T. That would cause a given stress in the specimen due to thermal expansion. After building the towers that carry electricity wide URS, workers tightly connected to towers that are 100 meters apart with an aluminum wire that is 1 centimeter in diameter. It was summertime and the ambient temperature when the installation process took place was 40 degrees Celsius. The modulus of elasticity of aluminum is equal to 70 gigapascals. The yield strength of aluminum is equal to 100 megapascals and the coefficient of linear expansion of aluminum is equal to 23.9 times 10 to the minus 6 Kelvin to the minus 1. Assuming the two towers are completely rigid, find the winter temperature at which the wider will begin to yield. Also, how does the length and diameter of the wider affect this temperature? We'll use the shown equation to obtain the temperature at which the stress in the wire will reach the yield stress of the wire's material. Plugging in 100 times 10 to the power 6 pascals for sigma y 23.9 times 10 to the minus 6 kelvin to the minus 1 for alpha L, and 70 times 10 to the power 9 pascal for E sub y we get a change in temperature of 59.8 degrees Celsius. We then take the summer temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and subtract delta T of 59.8 degrees Celsius, hence a winter temperature of minus 19.8 degrees Celsius or lower, will cause the wire to yield due to thermal stresses. Finally, since the change in temperature delta T that would cause the wire to yield, is only a function of the yield strength, the coefficient of linear expansion, and the modulus of elasticity, we conclude that the length and diameter of the wire have no effect on the change in temperature delta T, Assuming that the wire is initially tightly connected to the two towers with no sagging, and that there are no initial internal stress or pretensioning in a wire, 